All liars will be proven as such, either in this life or the next. Those who are liars will be proven either in this life or the next. We know that God, uh, six things the Lord detests, seven are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue is the second one that comes in that sequence of the six to seven things. And we know that God hates liars. He hates, uh, it says that God is angry with the wicked every day. And we know that those who are liars are partakers of the wicked because the wicked are deceptive. And anything that is deceptive is damaging to the truth. And anything that is damaging to the truth is of the enemy. We know that uh, Lucifer is the father of lies. We know that those who follow in the way of darkness are deceptive. We know that deception is not that of the truth. And those who seek to lie to get themselves out of certain circumstances or seek to, to get some sort of gain in their desire and their pursuit and what they ultimately want, uh, they are living a life that is going to have to constantly be disguised by their lies and eventually they will be found out for them being a liar. And that is why it is so important when we believe Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, and repent of our sins, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's always going to convict us when we are those who lie. And anyone who cannot own up to a lie is going to have to continue to live a life covering up for that lie. And as lies compound, the more and more as that goes on, uh, the unsettled state within a person uh, is going to continue to ramp up and be until they are humble enough to admit that they have lied and they seek God for forgiveness and for others uh, to whom they may have lied to. And that is why it's important that when we do notice ourselves lying, we need to be humble enough to acknowledge it and say, God, I don't know why I did that. Forgive me. And then if we hurt someone through our lies, we need to be humble enough to go to that person and say, I'm sorry for lying in this situation. Um, and when, when we have the humility to do that, there is such healing that comes forth. And we, we I mean, look at Peter, for example. He thought he would never uh, uh, forsake Christ. He, he thought he'd never speak against him. But uh, as Jesus had said, uh, Peter three times neglected to stand up for Christ. Three times he forsook uh, Christ and said, no, I don't know the man. And he lied there, and it caused a disruption in the spirit. He was sorrowful. He was uh, remorseful over all that he did. And yet he knew that when he revisited his time with Christ, and Christ asked, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord. And then he asked again, and he said, yes, Lord. And then, and then he, Jesus asked again, and, he, and Peter responds, Lord, you know all things, and you know my heart. This was a process of healing. It was a process of Jesus revealing to Peter that I don't hold this against you, and I still love you, and I acknowledge your uh, remorseful spirit, and let's continue on. Let's continue our relationship. Know that I have forgiven you. There's such beauty in that. And that's why we must never be those who lie, but we are always those who speak the truth. We always want to not only speak the truth, in a bold and uh, direct manner, but also in a loving manner. Because as Ephesians says, we need to be those who share the truth in love. And it is only the Holy Spirit who can do both of those within us. And so we would just ask and pray that the Holy Spirit would keep us from lying, would keep us from the path of liars and those who are deceptive in their speech. But may we just desire to be truthful. And if we have wronged God, if we have wronged others, may we just seek to have a humble spirit that says, God, forgive me. May we ask for forgiveness for the other people and may we seek to reconcile because we know that all liars will be proven either in this life or the next. Uh, if people continue in their lies, if the wicked continue in their lies, they will be found out on that final day and people will see everyone. All of us will see everyone for who we were and what we stood for uh, in this life. All of that will be exposed. We know we will be naked and exposed before him to whom we must give an account. We will stand before the righteous judge who is able to judge the living and the dead. We need to fear him who can cast both body and soul in hell. But we also need to walk in the fear of the Lord, knowing that when we are born again, God loves us. He's not out to get us. He's not out to damn anyone. He wants to save all people. But the question is, is are we willing to enter into his truth and to remain in his truth in the power of the Holy Spirit? 
So may we uh, just understand that all liars will be found out in this life or the next. May we give over all situations over to the Lord. May we not uh, question why the wicked prosper as David did, but may we know that the end of all things, God has the final say, and he will do what is good because vengeance is the Lord's, he declares, and he will repay. And we can trust that God will do right because he is the righteous, perfect, pure, loving, and holy one of Israel.